This is Barry Zelma speaking for Claim School Incorporated's blog, Zelma on Insurance. Today will be a little different, where we find that an insurer is not a horse thief, but actually a lifesaver. And making a sick horse well is not a breach of a horse mortality policy. The parties sued over an insurance dispute concerning a champion show horse named Thomas. Thomas is still alive and well, but Thomas's owner, Julie Greenbank, sued her insurance carrier, Great American Assurance Company, for failing to provide mortality coverage for Thomas. In a case called Julie Greenback versus Great American, a decision of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals dated August 30, 2022, Greenbank alleged that Great American breached the insurance policy and acted in bad faith by unreasonably withholding consent for Thomas's authorized humane destruction, opting instead to perform a tenotomy that destroyed, in Greenback's opinion, Thomas's use as an athletic show horse. She also alleged that Great Americans continue in care and control over Thomas long after the policy terminated constitutes conversion and theft. The district court, after hearing all the evidence, dismissed her claims at summary judgment and Green Bank appealed to the Seventh Circuit. The insurance policy came into effect on, in September of 2017 after Green Bank purchased an American saddlebred gelding horse named Awesome, whose barn name was Thomas, for half a million dollars. Green Bank intended to use Thomas as an athletic show horse for competitive purposes. Shortly after the purchase, Green Bank obtained a mortality insurance policy with Great American for Thomas's full purchase price. The policy provided coverage in the event of Thomas's death or authorized humane destruction. Under the policy, a horse's death or authorized humane destruction must result in part from an illness injury or a specific surgery. To obtain coverage in the event of Thomas's death or authorized humane destruction, the policy required Green Bank to meet certain conditions preceding. One condition preceding required Green Bank to immediately notify Great American if Thomas became ill. The policy noted that failure to provide immediate notice of Thomas's illness will invalidate any claim under the policy. If Thomas became ill, the policy allowed Great America to, with Green Bank's permission, assume control over Thomas's treatment. In addition to mortality coverage, the policy also provided a major medical endorsement and a guaranteed renewal endorsement. In December of 2017, Green Bank boarded Thomas at Cedarwood Farms in Evansville, Indiana, to begin, begin training with Chuck Herbert. In February of 2018, however, Thomas became ill with colic and pneumonia. Thomas lost 50 pounds and developed cellulitis in all four legs and uvitis in his eye. Based on this, Dr. Stone Green Bank's veterinarian determined that Thomas was very sick. On top of this, Thomas later pulled his right stifle, rendering him lame in his right hind. Thomas's ability to get up and down were compromised. Green Bank reported Thomas's pneumonia to Great American, and after hearing from a vet, that Thomas might need to be euthanized, Great American, pursuant to the policy, retained its own veterinarian to provide treatment for Thomas. Eventually, Thomas was transported to Hagyard Equine Medical Institute, a facility in Lexington, Kentucky, where Dr. Kathy McGilvery became Thomas's primary veterinarian. 
Dr. McGilvery evaluated Thomas and determined that Thomas suffered from a deep lung abscess and severe laminitis. Dr. McGilvery advised that based on Thomas's declining health, it would not be unreasonable to make a euthanasia recommendation. She wanted, however, to try treatment first before recommending euthanasia. Thomas re received treatment for his deep lung abscesses first, followed by his severe laminitis. For the latter condition, veterinary podiatry specialist Dr. Brian Fraley recommended that Thomas undergo a tenotomy, which involves a one-inch incision in cutting the deep flexor tendon to restore blood flow and relieve pressure on the coffin bone. Greenback objected to Thomas's tenotomy tenotomy on the basis it would destroy Thomas's future athleticism as a show horse. She requested more conservative treatments, but Dr. Fraley advised that the tenotomy was Thomas's only chance of regaining any athletic ability because after a tenotomy, the tendon would eventually heal and become functional. Dr. Fraley performed Thomas's tenotomy Tommy, and he would later testify Tim Thomas's surgery went well, and Thomas had a remarkable recovery. Within a year after his surgery, Thomas gained back his weight and returned to trotting, bucking, running, and galloping around the Pine Ridge Farm where he now resides. Now, Green Bank's policy expired on September 28, 2018. To renew the policy under the GRE, she submitted a payment of $14,725. Great American, however, denied the policy renewal based on Green Bank's failure to meet several conditions preceding, including providing Great American with immediate notice of Thomas's illness in February of 2018. Though the policy has terminated, Great American exercising its obligation to treat its insured in utmost good faith, continues to care for and maintain control of Thomas. The district court determined that Great American did not breach the policy because there was no covered cause of loss. Thomas did not die by natural causes or by authorized humane destruction. Green Bank argued the Great American breached the insurance policy, but failed to show the trial court or the Seventh Circuit that Great American breached the insurance. The mortality insurance policy at issue provided coverage in the event of Thomas's death. There's no dispute that Thomas did not die naturally or by authorized humane destruction. That alone should end the inquiry into whether Great American breached a mortality insurance policy. Thomas saw three veterinarians over a period of five months, and during that time, no veterinarian suggested that Thomas needed to be euthanized, let alone certified that fact to Great American. The possibility of euthanasia is neither certification nor a determination that immediate euthanasia was imperative for humane reasons. There was no evidence that Great American expressly agreed to euthanize Thomas, and nothing in the policy required it to do so. Nothing in the contract says that Great American was expected to protect Thomas's use as a show horse. To protect Thomas's use as a show horse, Green Bank could have sought a loss of use policy. She cannot now attempt to turn a mortality insurance policy into a loss of use policy by claiming the Great American unreasonably withheld authorized humane destruction. In addition to her breach of contract claims, Green Bank argued that Great American acted in bad faith 
based on several policy actions relating to one mortality coverage and to the GRE. Great American did not wrongly deny mortality coverage. Therefore, Green Bank is unable to show bad faith as to this claim. Just because Great America did not choose a medical route, route that Green Bank desired or otherwise resolve the claim to her liking does not mean that Great America acted in bad faith. And because Green Bank failed to show that Great America breached the contract under the GRE, her bad faith claim fails for that reason as well. But then she claimed that Great American stole her horse. Tortious conversion or common law conversion is either the appropriation of the personal property of another to the party's own benefit. A plaintiff claiming tortious conversion must establish that he or she owned the property and that the defendant's possession was unauthorized or without consent. Where the defendant's initial possession of plaintiff's property is lawful, Conversion occurs only after an unqualified demand for return, unless such a demand would be futile. There's no dispute the great American's initial possession and control of Thomas was lawful based on the policy terms and conditions, and therefore the district court denied her motion. It is unusual, of course, the great American maintained control of Thomas long after the policy terminated. Green Bank, however, failed to demonstrate that Great American's control of Thomas falls within the bounds of common law conversion because of a very important fact. She never demanded Thomas, and she has failed to show that any demand for Thomas would have been futile. Unlike tortious conversion, she also claimed a statutory conversion and theft which does not require a plaintiff to demand return. Although a demand for return is not required, a plaintiff must present evidence to raise a reasonable inference that the defendant was aware that their possession was unauthorized. Contrary to the allegations made by the plaintiff, no evidence existed for a jury to determine the great American knowingly or intentionally authorized control over Thomas. This is especially true when Green Bank's counsel specifically stated during a court conference that Great American could keep Thomas. When the magistrate asked, do you want the horse or not, Green Bank's counsel replied, no, as far as we're concerned, they can keep it. With no evidence, the great American knew that their continued control of Thomas was purportedly unauthorized. Green Bank's statutory conversion and theft claims fail, and the Seventh Circuit concluded that the judgment of the district court was to be affirmed in its full. Now, in my opinion, a horse owner upset because the insurer saved the life of the horse at its expense, and the horse is now alive and well, it is counterintuitive. People who own horses love them and don't want anything to happen to them. In this case, the insured wanted the horse dead because she could recover half a million dollars and re would recover nothing if the veterinarians paid for by the insurer brought the horse back to health. The Seventh Circuit dealt with all of plaintiff's specious arguments, especially when she refused possession of her half-million-dollar horse, who is now well and acting like a perfectly healthy and professional horse. This video was adapted from my blog, Zelma on insurance, which is available free to anyone who wishes to read it or listen to these videos by going to my website, zalma.com slash blog. You can also see it and hear it and read it on my Substack and on my Locals community.
If you found this video interesting or useful, please tell your colleagues and ask them to also subscribe. Thank you for your attention.